honored guests, honored veterans, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Ellen Besner, a journalist and the author of Double Threat, the book which tells the stories of the 17,000 Canadians of Jewish faith who served in World War II. I'm honored to be speaking with you today from here, the Jewish War Memorial section of Mount Sinai Cemetery in Toronto, as we mark a Remembrance Day unlike any other. As the world struggles with the COVID-19 pandemic and no clear sign when and how it will end. It's eerily reminiscent of the time in the late 1930s when the Second World War broke out and Canada's Jewish population mobilized to fight for freedom and democracy and against hatred and bigotry and totalitarianism. They went to fight for king and country, but also to save their own people from Hitler's final solution. For the young Jewish teenagers of those days, the 17-year-olds, 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds, they had to make a hard choice. Do they leave behind their family, their friends, their school, and their jobs for an uncertain fate? The Canadian Jewish personnel who went to war faced a similar risk as their non-Jewish comrades in arms, the risk of being killed on the battlefield, but for the Jewish personnel, their risk was a great personal risk because had they been captured by the Nazis or the enemy and their Jewish identities were discovered, their fate would be very dark indeed. They also faced widespread anti-Semitism at home, in the ranks, and on the battlefield. All of these challenges they met with bravery and courage. They fought in all the major battles, from Dunkirk to D-Day, on land, at sea, and in the air. You may not know that about 200 Canadians of Jewish faith were awarded bravery medals, like Sidney Shulamson of Montreal. He was Canada's highest scoring Jewish Air Force ace. He shot down seven German planes. He sank 12 or 13 German ships, and yet he was never promoted past the rank of flight lieutenant, which is captain. He also won two medals, the DFC and the DSO. Men like Ben Dunkelman, who nearly didn't even get into the war, also won two medals. Dunkelman enlisted in the Canadian Navy, but he was never called for nine months until one of his friends told him that Jews were not welcome in the Canadian Navy as officers. Despite the fact that he owned and his family owned Tip Top Tailors, he had gone to Upper Canada College and also knew how to sail. He owned his own yacht. So he eventually joined the Queen's Own Rifles and became a decorated hero and earned the nickname Base Plate Benny. Dr. Jack Markowitz of Toronto was a famous doctor, surgeon, and researcher in Toronto. But Canada's army wouldn't take him because he hadn't been naturalized yet. Although he always felt it was because he was a Jew who had been born in Romania. Marco went to London to sign up with British intelligence. Later, he served with the British as an army doctor in Singapore until he was captured by the Japanese. Marco spent three years in Japanese hands, in slave labor camps, in primitive jungle conditions, caring for the other prisoners who were building a road and bridge. He did hundreds of amputations. He was tortured, and when the war ended, he was decorated with a British Empire medal. He would never forgive Canada for not letting him serve. He suffered from what we now know was PTSD. Some of the other more well-known Canadian Jews who served included Monty Hall, a game show host originally from Winnipeg. He was turned down by the tank corps because, I don't think they're taking Jews, he was told. He served later in the entertainment units around Manitoba. Comedians Johnny Wayne and Frank Schuster were already famous for their radio shows. They dodged bullets and bombs to put on shows for the exhausted men in caves off the beaches of Normandy in the summer right after D-Day. The director of Love Story, Arthur Hiller, served as a navigator in the RCAF, and Robert Mervish, the brother of entrepreneur Ed Mervish, served in the U.S. forces. Comedian David Steinberg's oldest brother, Jaime, quit his job as a Winnipeg sports reporter to join the RCAF at 17 and a half. He bugged his parents and bugged them and bugged them to allow him to join up, even underage. Senator David Kroll, the former two-time mayor of Windsor, saw action overseas, as did Barney Danson, a Toronto-based cabinet minister. He lost an eye in action and three of his best friends. There were athletes, too, including Harry Campbell, a lacrosse player from the Montreal Maroons, Mitch Peckett of Kubar, Saskatchewan with the New York Rangers farm team, and Mo Hurwitz, a Montreal hockey player who turned down a tryout with the Boston Bruins because how can I play hockey when millions of my brothers are being killed, he said. 
It wasn't only famous Jewish families whose sons and daughters served. Truck drivers, tailors, fruit peddlers, shippers, dry cleaners, farmers, dentists, doctors, and lawyers. Jeweler Gerald Levinston was in charge of feeding and equipping the Canadian Army as they marched from Normandy to Berlin. Later, he was put in charge of taking the German surrender in May 1945. His general told him, I want a Jew to tell those bastards what to do. Even the sons of rabbis did their duty, especially the seven sons of the Mazer family of Ottawa. In fact, 16 rabbis served as chaplains. Some went overseas to minister to the men of their own faith and then help rebuild European Jewry once the war ended and the camps were liberated. Canada's women pitched in, too, both at home fundraising and sending comfort packages full of cigarettes and kosher salamis to the men overseas, while about 270 Jewish women served in uniform, including Rose Goodman of New Glasgow, Nova Scotia, who served as an adjutant at an Air Force base south of Calgary, and Daisy Lazar of Quebec City, a military police officer stationed in Ottawa. Mimi Friedman of Montreal spoke five languages, drove an ambulance in London, England during the Blitz, and was the only Canadian Jewish woman in uniform decorated for bravery, winning a mention in dispatches. Nearly 450 Canadian Jews paid the ultimate price during World War II. While some are buried in carefully maintained war cemeteries around the world, including in Hong Kong, Juneau Beach, Italy, Germany, and Holland, others have no known grave their bodies were never found to bury. So their names are on memorials across the country, like this one here at the Mount Sinai Cemetery in Toronto, which the Royal Canadian Legion Wingate Branch raised the money for to erect an evocative sculpture. It has the names of those Jews who fought and died not in just the Second World War, but also the First World War in battles of Vimy and the Somme and Passchendaele and Korea. A monument like this also sits in Montreal's Baron de Hirsch Cemetery, it has 579 names and is lovingly curated by Larry Rosenthal in honor of his brother Willie Velvel Rosenthal, a gunner who was killed in Italy in 1943. Willie was a journalist, and one of his letters home published in the local YMHA newspaper reminds us what our veterans fought for all those years ago so we could live in freedom. For the dead shall not have fallen in vain, not in a world where our holy sanctuaries are safe and unmolested, in a world where organizations, institutions of culture and learning and education are respected and upheld and supported. No price is too great to pay, no life too precious to enforce our beliefs and ideals, he wrote. That veteran's message rings true even more today, as we live in a world with widespread anti-Semitism, record levels of anti-Semitic incidents, according to B'nai B'rith and Canadian police figures, but also other forms of intolerance and hatred, anti-black racism, Islamophobia, and more. And as one of our veterans who just died a few days ago, Harry Hurwitz asked us to do in his dying wish is to honor our veterans. And you can do that by remembering that remembrance is not just to wear a poppy a few days a year or to stand at a moment of silence on Remembrance Day. Make remembrance an active verb. If you see intolerance, say something, do something, march, educate, call it out. Remember is an active verb.